Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and we are continuing on with our Three Kingdoms stuff. That's right, we're looking at uh, Sun Jian. I think that's, I think I nailed it, guys. Sun Jian. Sun Jian. Brilliant, we'll talk about him today. Um, so, really interesting to see uh, what this guy's about. So, disclaimer, as always. Um, all details included below are subject to change. The development continues and should not be considered fine. Brilliant. So, the Daredevil. That's right, Darid Evil. So, uh, the Daredevil. Uh, Sun Jian. Sun Jian. Cool. So, skilled and daring, known for taking risks and constantly seeking to prove himself. His unit gained guerrilla deployment in enemy territory, supporting his aggressive playstyle. So, uh, that's vanguard deployment. Um, guerrilla deployment, by the way. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Um, so, by proving his bravery, he gains increased replenishment in enemy territory, reduced mercenary costs, and increased character satisfaction. That, uh, that sounds kind of cool. So, yeah, just... Have him on the march at all times. That seems to be the way to do it. So, um, hero class, Sentinel. And uh, nickname, the Tiger of Jiandong. Not the Daredevil, apparently. Nope, it's the Tiger of Jiandong. So, who is he? So, uh, Sun Jian was born in 155 CE to a poor family in the south of China. Unlike other warlords of the period who came from powerful esteemed lineages, uh, Sun, Jian, uh, Sun Jian's father was just a merchant. And this lowborn background is what gives him a constant urge to prove himself against stronger foes. He's a skilled and daring warrior, known for taking risks. He excels under pressure, and is at his best when the deck is stacked against him. Fighting to end the chaos flooded through China, uh, Su Jian uh, has risked his life for the good of the realm on multiple occasions. Famous, uh, most famously, when fighting bandits at the seat of uh, Wan Chang, uh, Sun Jian. Sun Jian. Uh, placed himself at the head of his army and climbed the city walls alone, killing 20 men before the rest of his army flooded in. That's pretty badass. Uh, so Sun Jian uh, has never sh uh, shied away from opportunity, and despite his loyalties, the fool of the imperial court presents great opportunities. As a young man, Sun Jian rose from the obscurity of his mercantile upbringing, learning from the deeds of his father that fortune must be seized, never expected. It is this determined spirit that drives the Tiger of Jiandong forward. May his roar sweep all obstacles away. Just prior to the start of the game, uh, Sun Jian finds the Imperial Seal in the wreckage of Liu, uh, Liu Yang. Passed from dynasty to dynasty, it is said that whoever holds the Imperial Seal shall rule all of China. With the, uh, with the against, with the against, what? What? With the against, what? With the alliance? Maybe? With the coalition? I'm gonna go with that. With the coalition against the tyrant Dong Zhuo falling apart, Sun Jian decides to take the Imperial Seal back southwards to his home in uh, Changsha, where his beloved wife and a young family reside. Playstyle. Sun Jian is a talented warrior who pushes his armies forward and is always on the attack. If he keeps proving his bravery, he gains increased replenishment. Um, in enemy territory, recruits mercenaries at a lower price and increases the satisfaction of characters loyal to him. In enemy territory, all his units also have guerrilla deployment, supporting his aggressive playstyle. To finance his offensive campaigns, uh, Sun Jian can leverage the connections from his merchant family background. All his ports increase income from commerce across his holdings. Playing as Sun Jian, you'll be rewarded for initiating battles, particularly those where the numbers are against you. After all, even when outnumbered, a player who attacks multiple times can still defeat the opposition through smart or aggressive tactics in battle. As Su Jian's entire army gains guerrilla deployment in such a situation, this means he has the shortest potential time to, enga uh, to engagement of any faction, making it possible to defeat an army before reinforcements enter the fray. This is a potentially risky approach, however, as without decisive action early on, a player can find themselves overwhelmed in a protracted fight. Such battles are likely to be costly, but the replenishment bonuses granted by Sun Xian's faction through resource pool effects uh, faction through resource pool effects grant his army reduced downtime between battles and therefore the ability to continue fighting at the front as long as they are well supplied. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And um, of course anyone who uh, saw the Oh, what was it called? It was the ambush battle that they released last year, um, that I had on my channel, by the way. Um, I should link that in the description, anyway. Uh, his kids have grown up. Yeah, had a couple of these in that, in that battle. 
So uh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. These guys do become big players. So uh, Su Zhen is married to Lady Wu, and together have three young children. Uh, Sun Se? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sun Sun Se, maybe. Uh, Sun Xuan and Sun Sun Ren. Guided well, their power and influence will only grow over time, perhaps even to eclipse that of the father himself. So, and now for the bit that's never formatted right. What is up with this, anyway? Uh, let's see. Go well, power, go time, he could father himself. With a young family in the homestead down south and the motivations of his so-called allies becoming murkier by the day, it's easy to understand why Su Jian wanted to return home during such a pivotal point in his story. However, on his way home, he was ambushed by Liu Biao's forces and barely managed to survive, losing half his army in the process. Although he would later win multiple battles against Liu Biao outside his city of uh, Jianyang, his risk-taking nature soon shone through, refusing to flee after omens told of his impending defeat. Soon afterwards, he was ambushed again and shot to death with countless arrows. Oh dear. Leaving his children to grow up without a father. When playing as Su Jian, uh, your initial challenge is to make it back safely to your family and rewrite history in your favour. Huh. That's fun. Starting position. Uh, starts in uh, Jiang... Jiang... Jongling? Is that a, a G? Jongling. 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 Cool. Anyway. Uh, what's that near? I can't really see what that's near, to be honest. I'm not sure he's near much. So, huh. Oh, I think it's all Padong. Yeah, so I think, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Liu Biao starts up here, I think. So, uh, the game begins... That's just going to be the exact same thing, isn't it? Oh, maybe not. No, no, this is fine. I hadn't done this. Uh, the game begins with Sun Jian, north of the Yangtze... Uh, Yangtze? Yang I think it's Yang Yangtze? Yangtze? Anyway, river in uh, Xiangling. He's away from home and deep within enemy territory, although that's nothing new to him. He must continue his journey southwards back to his family in uh, Changsha. Uh, Changsha. Chang Changsha? Changsha. Again, maybe. Maybe, guys. Chinese? Not my first language. So, uh, I guess Mandarin, actually. I don't know, anyway. Um, so, not my first language. And continue building a base from there. So, uh, is there... Okay, although this all changes when faced with your campaign's first dilemma. Alright then. Initial dilemma. Uh, Sun Juan's major choice involves... Uh, first major choice involves the much-coveted Imperial Seal. When Liu Biao requests it from you, giving you two choices. You can accept losing the seal and improving your relations with Liu Biao. Or you can decline, pushing your alignment more towards Yan Chu and making Liu Biao an enemy. Interesting. Very cool. So, early on in your campaign, each playable warlord will have an initial dilemma they are faced uh, with once they fulfill certain prerequisite actions. These dilemmas will put the player at a fork of the road, at a pivotal moment in that warlord's story. One of the options available to you is the historical choice reflecting what actually happened, and the outcomes will follow how the events of the period unfolded. The other lets you forge a story down the path of what could have been. Total War is all about giving players the freedom to create their own stories at the fulcrum of some of the most exciting moments in human history. <coughs> Sorry guys, I had a lump in my throat. So, uh, where was I? I just lost where I was. Oh no! Oh no, it's all ruined! Um, so, uh, Total War is all about giving uh, players freedom. Uh, da -da -da -da. And these initial levels epitomize that spirit. Cool. The first major opportunity for that to happen while playing as Sun Jian um, revolves around the much coveted Imperial Seal in an incident where Liu Biao will request the Imperial Seal from you. You can accept his request, losing the seal and improving your relations with him, or you can decline, pushing your alignment more towards Yuan Xiao. Uh, Yan Shu, rather. Uh, making him an ally and Liu Biao an enemy. The fallout from this choice is huge, and at this point, your narrative can switch drastically. Either Liu Biao is appeased, your northern borders are relatively safe, and your immediate focus now changes to establishing your power base south of the Yangtze. Um, or, is about to go, uh, or it is all about war against Liu Biao and his vassals right on your doorstep. Either choice is likely to dominate your mid-game. Your ultimate aim is to build a larger realm in the south slash center of China, forming the kingdom of Wu, and then pushing forth even further to unite all of China under your rule. The allies and enemies you make during your, uh, during your while tackling your initial dilemma will have a key role in shaping how you fare in pursuit of that goal. 
So, what kind of player is uh, Sujan for? Sujan is the choice of a risk taker, the thrill seeker, someone who tries, uh, who tires of playing it safe and knows that when the odds are stacked against them, it makes for a more epic tale of victory. It does, it does, that's very true. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. So it sounds like it's going to be tough, but yeah, I mean, he's really good on the offensive, isn't he? So that kind of sounds awesome. So again, quite aggressive, similar to um, uh, uh, Zhang, Zhang Jiang, um, similar to her thing, where you've got to be quite aggressive. Um, I really like that. I really like that. It's very cool. Although, yeah, he also gets um, uh, better ports, right? So yeah, it's interesting. Definitely interesting. So yeah, very cool. So uh, yeah, once again, guys, uh, further reading, there is a link to this article in the description, so you can access these from there. So uh, be sure to check that out, and uh, or or just read the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. That's that's got all the information you could possibly want about all the characters. So maybe do that. So yeah, kind of cool. So who's next, guys? Who's next? Who's next? You can probably tell by this rotund silhouette. That's right, it's Dong Zhuo. Dong Zhuo will be our, uh, our final one. That's the final one. Uh, he'll be the last one we look at. So uh, be sure to tune in for that one next episode. Definitely want to learn a bit more about Dong Zhuo, because he's the tyrant. He's the big bad of the of the piece, isn't he? So it'd be cool to see what, uh, what he's all about. So, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.